railed against the financial terrorist that prompted him to take such a drastic uh, course of action. I was just born I was just born poor in a country where the wealthy manipulate, use, abuse, and economically enslave 90% of the population. Uh, rich Republicans, rich Democrats, same, same rich. They take turns fleecing us. No, there's a tiny banking elite that's very corrupt. And the military-industrial complex that manipulate the society. It's not the guy down the street that owns a restaurant, buddy, that's your enemy. Rich Republicans, rich Democrats, same, same, rich. They take turns fleecing us. Our few dollars pyramiding the wealth for themselves, he wrote. The 95% of the U.S. of A are neo-slaves of the global south. See, that's kind of a liberal thing there. Our masters, the wealthy, do as they like to us. Uh, and it just goes on from there. This goes far deeper than someone violently acting upon Political grievances. Duke's actions were solely guided by his economic woes, the fact that his wife had lost her job, that the unemployment benefits had run out, and that the future offered no hope whatsoever. No, he'd be homeless. This is a future that millions more Americans will have to face in the coming years as the unemployment rate, which is uh, really around 20% level, continues to accelerate. As we warn back in June, we are in the early stages of a new age of rage. We wrote an article about it, which will be characterized by riots, revolutions, and widespread backlash against the economic holocaust that has been unleashed by the global elite by design. Unfortunately, there will be many more clay dukes over the coming years. There will be more Americans who lose everything and decide that the best way is to simply lose it all together. Well done, Watson, on that article. Uh, but we're, again, I mean, it's clear. I've got more quotes here from him. He quotes Warren Buffett. Who, who was a few weeks ago on this week on ABC, sicking people on the rich, saying, you know, tax every, you know, you know tax people making 100000 a year, saying they're the rich. Because he's at the very top of the pyramid and uses government to transfer your wealth. Uh, we're going to come back with more of his quotes. We're on the march. The empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. This is Alex Jones with five good reasons you should consider buying a solar power generator. Number one, new climate legislation could easily double or triple your electric bill. Number two, our new energy czar wants to control how much power your electric company allows you to have. It's true. Total government control of electricity in the name of smart grid technology is coming. Number three, in some areas of the country, the power grid is dangerously overloaded. And now new socialist legislation is only compounding the problem. Number four, dangerous weather is always a threat to local grids. Every year, thousands of families lose their power from weather-related outages. Number five, a solar power generator provides powerful backup insurance and peace of mind. Folks, I really believe in the solar power generators offered by Solutions from Science, one of my oldest sponsors. You can get more information at www.mysolarbackup.com. That's mysolarbackup.com. Remember, the government doesn't own the sun, so go to mysolarbackup.com or call 1-877-327-0365. Hello, friends. This is Alex Jones. You've heard me talk about Calbin five-star soaps for years. This is an American-made product of the highest quality and compares to nothing you will find in stores. You can buy factory direct, shipped via UPS right to your door. Check them out on the web at fivestarsoap.com or call 800-340-7091. Take my word for it. Once you've used pure soap, you won't buy anything else. Since 1947, Calvin Soap Company has been showing consumers that soap can be tough on dirt and gentle on the environment. Buy American and stay clean, as well as support InfoWars. Visit 5starsoap.com today or call 1-800-340-7091. Well, Marty, what do you have to say? As founder and owner for over 63 years, satisfaction is guaranteed or double your dirt back. Call us at 1-800-340-7091 for a free catalog or visit our website, 5starsoap.com. Thank you. Folks, you've heard us talk about Home Gain before. Home Gain is now offering a special promo where you get up to $150 when you buy or sell a home with a Home Gain agent you find through their Find a Realtor program. Home Gain lets you compare realtors anonymously. It's easy. Go to HomeGain150.com to find and compare realtors anonymously. Enter promo code HomeGain150 and receive up to $150 when you close a deal with a HomeGain agent. 
Share the Home Gain 150 promo code with your friends via Facebook, Twitter, text, and more. Look for Max the Home Gain Gorilla to find out more about how Home Gain is going to pay you. Visit HomeGain150.com today to enter your promo code and get paid for buying or selling a house. That's H-O-M-E-G-A-I-N 150.com. From the front lines of the information war, it's Alex Jones. By the way, Paul Watson is beefing up, uh, adding more intel to his article, When Americans Lose Everything, They Start to Lose It. We've confirmed on his Facebook and other sites that his favorite websites were Media Matters and other mainstream news, but also We Are Change, which, of course, uh, I helped spawn with uh, Luke Radowski that is all about be the change you want to see in the world, nonviolent. Uh, and on the front page, there's a giant image of Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King. And, you know, Media Matters has been so wicked towards us and, and, and tried to claim that we're calling for violence I, that uh, they'll probably just excise out We Are Change and won't even care and, and just ignore that they're listed as well. Just outrageous. Very, very outrageous. So, so I, clearly this was a freaked out, upset guy who was just at the end of his road. And, and I want to explain this psychological profile for you right now because I discovered this doing research over the last 15 years. There was a 2020 special about it in 1991. Within one year in 1989 of public schools, including Littleton, Colorado, implementing what is called death education, and suicide prevention. They teach the kids how you die, you get in a simulated coffin. It's, it, it's very bizarre. It, it's, it's, it's mind control. It's meant to make them depressed. And that's come out with the big drug makers. They actually put this in in the name of making kids not commit suicide, but they know then that it introduces to the children the idea of committing suicide. And they've had just countless cases where particularly 11, 12, 13-year-old girls will hear about this and they'll teach them, oh, did you know little girls hang themselves with shoelaces or belts? And they'll go into the public school bathroom and hang themselves on the uh, coat uh, hanger uh, point that's on the inside of the stall. And, and, and you can search this and, and pull it up. School districts nationwide in the last five, six years have pulled out uh, the uh, coat hanger uh, uh, areas inside the stalls because people were killing themselves, mainly little girls. Then once the little girls say they're depressed because it's been introduced to them that they should be depressed, that it's a big, you know, big drama queen thing, then it's trendy for mommy and daddy to put them on Prozac or one of those other variants of serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Then, uh, but it's trendy to put little Johnny on the amphetamine class drugs, uh, like, uh, of course, Ritalin, Adderall and others that cause the heart to swell, the brain to shrink, they retard growth, they cause brain damage, and parents just sadly go, well, the school said so, and boy, my daughter or son's a lot better now. Yeah, because they're burnt out. You were giving them Coke, you were giving them sweets, they were having sugar crashes, they had bad nutrition, and so you just burned their brain out. I'm sorry if you don't want to hear this, this is a fact. Uh, I've talked to medical doctors, nutritionists, you name it. They've, they've done major studies where getting real nutrition and not drinking fluoridated water and not drinking processed you know, sugar drinks that are in vending machines all over the schools or chocolate milk like we had in school. I remember always like an hour after lunch, I get a headache and feel groggy because I was going and eating pizzas, two chocolate milks. I like salad, so I'd go ahead and eat a salad too. But, boy, I love that school food. <laughs> you know, the mashed potatoes, the chicken fried steaks. I was in there getting double helpings. It's unhealthy. But, but again, I'm just trying to cover the whole spectrum of this. They introduced the idea of how to commit suicide. So now since they introduced death education, 
uh, in the late 80s, and it's gone nationwide since then. You look at the charts for teenage suicide, it's just going straight up. And it's the same thing with the media advertising and hyping people going postal in the 80s. It was always military veterans, in almost every case, who had lost their their governors to not want to shoot and kill people. Most of them had been in combat. They'd shot and killed people. That's how they deal with stress. They've been trained to be killers. I'm not saying they're bad people. And then they go in to work at the government building, mainly the post office. It's a stressful job. They got some boss bossing them around, makes them angry. They don't go commit suicide. Or they don't go sell their house and, or, you know, go moving with family or go, you know, travel the country or whatever, as they should. Just enjoy life, even though they become homeless. They go in and they shoot their boss. And they shoot a couple other co-workers. The media hypes it up. They play it up. They constantly put that idea out there. They have all these drills for mass shooters all over the place. Introducing the idea. And then it begins to happen. So there's also uh, that facet to all of this. But I wanted to get in uh, to some more of the points that um, I made uh, dealing with this. When Americans lose everything, they start to lose it. And I wrote some notes here. Number one, Mike Jones, the security guard, did his job. He's a hero. He went in there, fired one time and shot Mr. Duke. Mr. Duke fell to the ground, realized what was happening, that he was about to go to prison for life, and killed himself, showing what a desperate person he was. We don't know if Duke, uh, again, didn't want to kill people and so was aiming above them or beside them, which is common if you're not a trained killer who's been you know, trained to instinctively kill and not think, like the police are with instinctive shooting and the military. We have the whole issue of the Second Amendment stopped this guy. And I've made the point, you come in my house, my business, my car, uh, you know, some, some, if there was some nut shooting people next door, I'd go out there and deal with them. Because that's how we respond to this. You don't respond by disarming or trying to disarm people because a nut's always going to be able to get a gun. A nut could walk up and hit a cop on the head with a baseball bat and take their gun away from them. Then the nanny state's answer is RFID and all the guns. Uh, and then they want to ban steak knives in England because people are stabbing people. No, it's the human mind that's the issue, not the car that can be used as a weapon or the airplane. It's the human mind. It's the individual. Again, I make the point that I am totally against what happened here. Uh, this is horrible. They will use this to clamp down on everybody. This is not the response we need. But if he's going to go after the government, why the school board? Well, they fired his wife. You know, they're laying people off for whatever reason. So that's why he went there. But if he's writing uh, in his uh, Facebook blogs and other places, my testament, some people, the government-sponsored media, which it is, will say I was an evil monster. No, I was just born poor in a country where the wealthy manipulate, use, abuse, and economically enslave 95% of the population. Rich Republicans, rich Democrats, same, same, rich. They take turns fleecing us, our few dollars, pyramiding the wealth for themselves. The 95% of us in the U.S. of A are the neo-slaves of the global south, our masters. 